today we have a special guest in the building. Dito Puente, uh, Dito Puente <laughs> Jr. is in the building. What's good, brother? What's up? It's a What's pleasure up? to have you up. Pleasure to be back in the BX, my home. That's great. Man. Well, well, we appreciate that. We know you got a busy schedule. We appreciate the yeah. time that you take out of to come and, and chop it up with Aris Radio. Aris Latino. Today is an exclusive show. Yeah. You know, we exclusive show uh, dedicated to all, not just Puerto Ricans, but Latinos across the world. Yeah. First, I would like to introduce legendary producer, awesome and my cousin. Okay. He's my hey, cousin from my mother's side. All right. He's not related to Tito Puente. He's actually yeah. related to my mother's side, the Asensio family. Yo. James the Asensio, you guys might know him as James de la Raza, yeah. producer of Fat Boys, yeah. Run DMC, oh, yeah. a lot of big yeah. time hip hop right artists. Yeah. Well, what's you know, up, James? What's up, James? It's a Hi, pleasure honey. to have you up here, too. Good, good to see you again, good. everybody, la familia. Yeah. Ponga el rapao. Soy de la raza boricua de cora con líricas finas, más palabras que las páginas amarillas y de pija. Siempre represento esta cultura. Latinos unidos y no divididos, aquellos oídos que quieren oído. Yo sigo para adelante como un elefante. ¡Pau! Levanta el oh, right. de café. Ah, 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 <laughs> James used to be the editor in chief of Source Latino, Source oh, the magazine. Source, Source, yes. Source Latino. Yes. He is the creator of that and looking to do that again That's to big. make sure that Winston Yandel, all the big acts, okay. big Latino acts, not even just Winston Yandel, all Latino acts, yeah. Tego, uh, Don Omar, all the big acts are going to be represented uh, uh, in the, uh, are in the hip hop community. Are you based out of New York? Are you out in New York? No, I'm, me and Tito have a million dollar facility now yeah. in Miami. Okay. Uh, okay. Studio Center. With okay. SSL, Duo Sony's. We have Busta Rhymes, mm -hmm. uh, Missy Elliott. You know, a lot of reggaetoneros. All the okay. Boricua Guerreros. James, nice. ori Back. James is originally from Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Brooklyn. Representing yeah. Brooklyn. So we represent <laughs> well, the, the all all parts of okay. the East Coast. Brooklyn. And over here to my right, to right, everybody on the web. Yeah. Uh, to here on my right is Mr. Chico Mendez. He was featured in a very distinctive movie okay. called El Cantante, All the right. story of Hector Lavoe. Chico very Mendez in the house. So, so I want to start here, okay? Um, were you always involved with music, like, was it, or did you pick it up later? Were you always involved with music? Well, you know what? Go, you want to ask go ahead, me that, go ahead, lady. You know what? You want you want to talk about music? Did he start off as me? You know what? Somebody told, told me uh, or uh, told uh. us. Pero tú eres bochinchera. Ya tú sabes. So somebody cara, told you and you believe it. That's that's it. No, I'm asking ask, you right here, exclusively, yeah. Ars, All right. that you wanted to start off you as, a hip, as a rock. Oh, you as started as a hip hop. Is that true? Is you that know what? That is not even a rumor. That's a fact. Oh, you see, that is a fact. I know because I have the record. And we're ah, you got the guarachando. I got the ponytail going on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You could YouTube me and you see me with the what hair. Happened? Like Elvis Crepo. Oh, no, my God. Well, okay. you know, well, you know uh, Mark Anthony started with the freestyle with Ralph Mikado. But we did hear that and we said we were going we to ask you. Yes. Yes. No problem. So when did you make the transition from, the, how long did your hip-hop career last? I got to tell you, I didn't really have a hip hop career. Okay. What it was called You're back in the early or the late 90s was Latino house music. Mm. Along with Two in a Room, Two with Our Hats, Tito Puente Jr. and General. Okay. They had the reggaeton. Yeah, gore. I remember General. That was yes. before reggaeton. Reggaeton yeah. was already born. And General in was the Rico. first one out but here. Who dropped. But yeah, yeah, CNC Music they Factory, yeah. uh, Wepa Man, all that, the, all that funk yeah. back then was part of a Latino house movement. That's right. And there was, Taino was one of the guys That's right. who yeah. really made that yeah. stuff happening with the Yo Soy Boricua, yeah. Paca Tu You remember sepa. Mexicano? Mexicano's Mexicano one of my very the, good friends uh, was doing created it. that. You're talking about, I'm, I'm, if you want to go way back, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about Lisa M. Evie mm. Queen when she yeah, when yeah. she didn't have the she implants. Been doing it a long time. And, you know, <laughs> but you know, way back when, and I got to tell you that James right here produced yeah. my first album. It was really? on EMI Latino, EMI okay. Records, well, 1996. Well, I read it. Abi Quintanilla. Abi Quintanilla. Quintanilla. Yes. This was Selena's a little bit, brother. Yes. Selena. This was right when Selena passed away. Okay. I, I was doing Latin house music, and, and Abi came to me. And Selena was still alive at that point. Okay. Wanted to do a record with me. Okay. And I came to James, my cousin. I said, yo, Abi and Selena came to us and wanted to do a record. Then she passed. Okay. Very sad. Wow. So what happened with the label is that they still wanted to put out my record, but I said I still got three cuts yeah. still willing to be put on the album. So I came to James. Okay. He created some reggaeton, a little bit different yeah. from the rest of the album. But that year, I won the Billboard Dance Music Award for yes, the best video did. of the year. Wow. Yes, for Oye Como Va. Congratulations. Oye Como Va, my yeah. father's signature Yeah, we're going we're gonna to play. We're going to play. Jay, I am working on a movie on the life story of Tito Puente. Oh, that's uh -huh. his life nice. story. It's going to come out in 2010. You know I'm there. It's, it, it's going to be probably bigger than Ray. 
Okay. Ray, wow. the movie with yes. Jamie Foxx. Who, who's involved with the production of it? At this point, I have CAA, which is a very big company okay. out in, in Los Angeles, a creative artist agency, are, are pitching to different... Uh, Warner Brothers and Sony seem to be... in Columbia okay. Films seem to be the ones that are very attached to it. Okay. The Celia Cruz story, which is my yeah. madrina, yeah. my yeah. godmother, I know. is another thing that's happening with Lionsgate and a lot of other producers. But yeah. the Tito Puente story is something that's very vital yeah. and important to the Latino community you, and not only that, to the American community you, because my father created a you, sound you, you, yeah. that definitely. was incredible. You, you, know, what's in, you know what's incredible? Yeah. Um, when, what year did your dad come to, to the States, to New York? I seen a, a years ago. I seen a, a biography. I'm just My father to, was what, born you, right here in the Bronx really? at Bronx Lebanon Hospital okay. in 1923. Okay, wow. it's probably before your grandmother was yeah. born. Oh, yeah, <laughs> long time. yeah. Long, well, so 1912. She was bro, born, so bro, right. there was so, there wasn't even the car. It was horse yeah. and buggy. <laughs> okay. okay, going down Pelham Parkway. <laughs> <All right. laughs> why, why, why I say why, while I ask this is. Why yeah, I it was a this, dirt road. Why ask this though? The reason that I ask this is because I want to point something out. While a lot of Latinos came in the 40s and in the 50s and were just making their way, your bro- your dad was doing something that was phenomenal. Like, Correct. I, 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 like Desi Arnaz. Yes. When most Latinos were coming here and just uh-huh. trying to get jobs as janitors and find a way, this guy was doing monumental. Your dad was doing production. Your dad was doing yeah. these big shows. Con like, like People don't, don't understand how big it was at that time to be doing what he was doing. I got it. Yeah. Go ahead, spit. Go ahead, spit. go ahead. No, you know, there's a lot of things about my uncle that, you know, even I learned. Yeah. Growing up with him and shorties, you know. Yeah. I knew that somebody's got to carry this one yeah. day. Carry it away. Whether it be him, yeah. whether it be me. Yeah. To the day I die. Well, I rep you. Puente. You understand? Yeah. What is that? It's happening. It's happening both now. Like, it's definitely. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people don't know about Tito, man. Like, certain things I don't want to give away from the movie yeah certain things don't know about tell them about war hero story okay. my father was in uh world war ii and he served about four years on the uss santi wow a lot of your parents or whoever's watching probably remember that war okay. uh my father served on that war and then after that he came out of the war and he went into the machito band and then created his own band called the piccadilly boys and then created tito puente okay. he, pu- he was the the, the founding father of bringing the timbales, the percussion, right. to the front of the orchestra. That's right. Back then, it was very wrong to put any percussion player in the front. It was usually a yeah. singer, mm-hmm. a singer like Tito Rodriguez yeah. or or Tito whoever Rodriguez. it was, or Desi Arnaz. Yeah. Desi Arnaz was a very handsome fella yeah. playing the bongos and congas That's or whatever. Sing, yeah. But my father was someone who just brought that out in the front and made him very through. attractive to yeah. the crowd. And especially when you see somebody playing an instrument and singing and performing at the same time. And that is the way Broadway was developed. I'm not saying my father was an integral part of it, but it does create something. You have to learn how to sing, act, and dance. Yeah. And Tito Puente was the epitome of that. And have the and have the charisma to keep the people interested. Absolutely. To have the I was born in 71, man. Okay. Way past Palladium era. Yeah, yeah. Way past the, the pinnacle of his career. Yeah. Actually, I wouldn't say... It's funny because Tito Puente had three reincarnations. Yeah. The first one was when he first came out of the war and he became Tito Puente and okay. created a song called Ran Can Can in okay. 1949 wow. from the movie Mambo Kings. Yeah. And it was a very famous tune. And then after that, he had another reincarnation in 1971 by a gentleman by the name of Carlos Santana. Okay. He redid a song called Oye Como Va. Yes. My father re- received song. a very, huh? very big residual check yeah. <laughs> from that and I'm became sh- Tito Puente the second phase okay. of his career yeah. and then he became in Mambo Kings and got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame wow. suspect on the Simpsons 104 wow. 68 albums to his credit seven time Grammy Award winner 14 wow. nominations I can go on and on you know what you know what so you're talking about a man who was on the Cosby show and just became a, a an icon of yes. Americana music well, we're pre-